Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm Ramon here, here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. This week I have four new reviews for you folks at home, and a list of 11 plagiarized stories I found this week uh, that I'm showing you, just to warn you about, uh, that they do exist. Um, so we'll talk about all that later, of course. Um, the reviews I have for you this week are going to be Apocalypse Gates, book number seven in the series called Unexpected Developments. Um, so there we go. And also be reviewing Dross Brings the Bones and uh, Adversary Volume 1. Uh, also, Hung Ogre, uh, Caverns and Creatures Short Stream by uh, Robert Bevan. And last is going to be Miram Logan, which is a webcomic. Uh, so all kinds of stuff for you to learn about this week. Before we get into that, we're of course going to go into Lit RPG News. <laughs> And in Little RPG News, we're going to start with a nice sale. Um, there are actually a few sales that happened this week. Um, they're over, though, because of uh, Amazon Prime Day from companies like Mountain Dew Press and some other companies. Uh, one of the still existing uh, today and I think the weekend is going to be discarding book number one. Uh, it's available for $0.99 cents in the U.S. Uh, in the U.S. Amazon store, so definitely go check it out. It's an entering story. I think we gave it a 7-point-something uh, review score. Uh, very, very good entertaining story. And, of course, it has an audiobook version for you folks that enjoy audiobooks. Um, it's a Russian translation story. Um, on to plagiarized stories. Got 11 of them this week. These things just keep popping up left and right. And this week, there were 11. They're all stolen from um, the website Web Novels. Um, and, you know, we do our best as a podcast to to verify that these are all stolen, of course. Contacting the authors, let them know how to get them taken down as the original right holders. Um, it's a whole process they got to go through. Uh, but in the meantime, I try to put a one-star review in them so other readers will know. Um, and if you want to do so, too, please feel free to do so. It's a way to help um, kind of let readers know that these are plagiarized stories and the original authors are not being compensated. They have no authorization to be up here. Um, it can actually affect the original author if they ever choose to obviously publish their stories because it'll show that they're copying somebody else, which is not the case. Um, so this week we actually have um, Master of Mist is stolen from the story of the same name. Um, characters' names were changed. Also, Prime Treachery is stolen from a story called Prime colon treachery um saul age of god is stolen from a story called saul s-o-l vestor new age of god um hero gamer is stolen from a story called hero x gamer x hero that one was a little hard to find him out uh, the original version of it um stolen from there because the, the character names are changed like, like that these plagiarizers are just you know find and replace a certain character name to try to get try to try to get past um Automatic plagiarizing, you know, programs that Amazon may or may not have. Um, also, Survivor's Path is stolen from an ongoing web novel called Virtual Reality Survivor's Path. Um, the Game of Worlds is stolen from a story called The Game of Worlds. And let's see what else. Nonstop Leveling is stolen from a story with the exact same name from web novels. Um, and, uh, yeah. and Oblivion's Conqueror is stolen from an ongoing web novel story called Lynx Alpha Negellus, the Conqueror of Oblivions, and Master of the Seventh Gate is stolen from a story of the same exact name from web novels. Uh, the Mes Messenger of Death is stolen from a web novel story of the same exact name, and Bearskin is stolen from a novel of the web novel story of the exact same name. Uh, of course, with author's name changed and also character name changed from Folk to Farron. Um, Oddly, this one was uh, uh, only the name change only happens in the synopsis when you actually read the story. It's actually still Folk. Um, so the plagiarists was so lazy, they only changed the name in the Amazon synopsis and not on the actual full novel of story. So there you go, 11 stories to look out for. If you see them, feel free to, again, um, review them appropriately. Um, I've also noticed that actually some reviewers who've read these stories and like, this is totally stolen, but I don't care. Here's five stars. I liked it other than that. I'm like, that, that, that's a choice. That is definitely a choice. Uh, but again, doing so actually gives the plagiarizer money um, because they're on Kindle Unlimited. 
uh, every page we eat actually sends this person, uh, you know, some, some money for further theft and the two things. So, um, that's not, not good. So there you go. On to stuff that is out now, um, stuff that's been out recently, haven't had a chance to read it, but I'm letting you know it's out, including 86 Neon, uh, King's Lead Book Number 2, Carnival of Fear is also out. This is a, uh, a year, thankfully, a yearly uh, a dungeon, like a horror dungeon core novel from the amazing Jonathan Brooks. This is the third book in the series, the third year he's done this. This time, <laughs> looks like it revolves around clowns and carnivals. And I'm like, ooh, that is not something I'm going to read. I actually read a couple of these and they were enjoyable, but again, they are creepy. Um, good suspense, but they also really do include uh, a <laughs> dungeon core um, addition, usually in the, in the guise of like, oh, creating the monsters for people to be scared or murdered by. Um, so this is a yearly thing that Jonathan Brooks does. And for, for fans of horror or horror liturgy, this is always a favorite. So check it out if you're into that. Um, also condition evolution book two is out. This is a re-release of actually, this is a, a new story in the series. The original condition evolution, um, got negative reviews because of a uh, writing issue, technical writing issues. The author, um, redid, edited that book, got better cover, which is a lot better, honestly, than the first edition. Um, and now the second book is out. So if you like book number one, the new edition of that, you might enjoy the second book in that series too. Um, also from Victor Decker, this is the weaponized part two which is an expansion on an older story. Um, also out is the third book in the Overdrive series, one of the only literary stories that has mech battles. Um, so check it out if you're into mechs. Um, also out are two stories that revolve around Rome and Rome, um, Roman setting. Uh, I was like, oh, this is, oh, this is going to be challenging for some authors. Um, the first one is from Portal Books, written by Anthony Wright, called Caesar's Shadow, Gods and Kings, book number one. Uh, the second one is written by, um, it's actually uh, Angel Ramon, uh, who's using the um, pseudonym here of Angelus Maximus. <laughs> and his, his novel is called The Great Centurion Punic Wars. And I just put a lot of everybody into, into the story and some beta readers have really seemed to be enjoying it. But they're t- just by coincidence or maybe... Um, I would say, but we'll say by coincidence, two stories revolving Rome in the same week published uh, by two independent authors. So there you go. Uh, also, it is I Am Gabriel, book number four by Gabriel Rathwig. Um, a new story from uh, Darren Halterberg is called A Vagrant Sword. And uh, Rebuild, Ben Hammer's Chronicles, book number one is out, as is the short story from um, Tim Caver in the Cypher Craft series um, called Origins, book number one, called Apocalypse Archer. And the second book in the City and the Dungeon series is out for you to enjoy. And the third book in the Sun and Shadow Online series is out as well. So there are all kinds of new literary titles for you to enjoy. And uh, we also have some new audiobooks for you guys who are audiophiles, who love listening to this stuff while you drive, while you work. I was definitely one of those people. Uh, and it helps you get you through a lot of books. Remember, you can, you can speed that up if you really need to. Um, and that includes uh, the third book in the Ether Collapse series called Earth Dumb is out for you to enjoy. The seventh book in the Rise to Ominous series is out. The third book in the Blood Feast series. Um, also, the audiobook for King's Lee, book number two. So, ebook and audiobooks coming out at the exact same time. Um, then by Mountain Dale Press. Um, also, the Modern Paladin series, books one and two, um, are out as a compendium publisher pack. And uh, Zero God Awakening is out for you to enjoy for some reason. Someone actually, this 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 novel did not do particularly well as an ebook, uh, and yet somebody did an audiobook of it for some reason. So it's there for you to enjoy or to listen to if if you want. Um, an upcoming little bit this just where I tell you a bunch of stuff that's coming out in the near future. Uh, readers. Sometimes they're limited pocket books and they need to know when their favorite series are coming out or just things that look interesting for me. I also know authors uh, who are publishing like to schedule their stuff around when maybe there are like empty spots in a week or maybe they're just not <laughs> going to want to publish when somebody with a big name tends to publish. And so this list is useful for them as well. Uh, we have Harmon Cooper coming out with a, a new series called Sacred Cat Island on October the 20th. He's told me, he's written to, in saying that this is a bit crunchier than some of the other things he's written. Um, but it also is very slice of life um, in in the vein of um, The Wandering Inn. Um, so he's definitely taking inspiration from that kind of slice of life story. We'll, so we'll see how it ends up turning out. Cover art's nice, though. 
Um, the sixth book in the Respawn series will be out on October 21st. The fifth book in the Bad Guy series will be out on October 22nd. The fourth book in the Underdog series, which is a Russian presentation novel a series that I've enjoyed, out on October 26th. The third book in the Internal Online series will be out on October 27th as well. Um, a new story from Joshua Kern will be out on October 27th called The Ridden. Um, a new series called October um, Crimson Sands, uh, Sosaku Online will be out on October 31st. Uh, a new Russian translation series from um, some prolific Russian authors. It's called um, The Master of Metal, The Cards of Fate, book number one, out on November the 3rd. Uh, the third book in the Heavenly Throne series will be out on November the 10th. Sixth book in the Monster Maces and Magic series will be out on November the 10th as well. And November 10th, once again, Alchemist, book number four. On November 11th, Beta Tester Book Number 3. November 23rd, Dungeon Seeker, which is the second book in that series. November 23rd will be the Biomedical and Self-Engineering Series Book Number 2. December the 1st, Dream Stream Reality Book Number 2. December the 3rd, League of Losers Book Number 2. December the 10th, it'll be the Project Stellar Book Number 3. Um, Bone Knight Series Book Number 1 will be out on December the 11th. On December the 14th, it'll be the range book number one in the, a new um, gun modern setting series um, from, from another Russian author out on December the 14th. The December the 15th will be the Underhill Chronicles book number two. December the 16th, Interworld Network book number three. December the 28th, the Small Unit Tactics volume number two. And December 31st will be Spears Destiny, the f- fifth book in the Arkemi online chronicles series so there you go a bunch of stuff that's coming out in the near future on to though the reviews for this week okay first review this week is going to be unexpected dev elements apocalypse gates author's cut book number seven um, and it is uh, 479 pages $4.99 it's available on Kindle Limited and here's the author's description Alvin was happy to finally give Gothi one of the things she's always been begging for all along, a plane. So he was understandably upset when it died on its first short-lived flight as they helped the Red River Army Depot fend off a horde of zombies from Dallas. Gothi was happy to get a replacement of the plane, however, and the armored vehicle supporting a big gun pleased Alvin as well. With the Bradley fighting vehicle in their possession, he couldn't help but wonder what could possibly be a real challenge in the future. Alvin made the decision that they should all would all take a few days to learn what the Bradley was capable of before they ventured further east. Its Bushmaster gun delivered a hell of a kick to anything with armor, although Alvin wondered how they could acquire tow missiles or high explosive ammunition to boost their damage even more. Alvin, after Alvin and his group wiped him out a mini boss without so much as breaking a sweat, Alvin should have been expecting more changes to the game he now inhabited. After all, he seemed to be a nexus of developments as the game went on. That is a, a, a description. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it really conveys uh, the, the, the just like the good action adventure that happens in this particular story. Uh, the series as a whole is a very slow uh, slice of life. Um, there are still the adult situations. There is sex in the story, so just be aware of that if that's not something you're into. Um, you know, you know, set was the seventh book in the series. It, it's been in the other six. Um, the chapters are segregated, or they're, they're separated rather, um, so you're not going to actually run into them. You know, while you're reading, that it's very clear when when they're happening. Um, it, so it is what it is. Um, but the story itself is. For me, at least, like a delightful action-oriented um, turn this week. There, there, this this episode. There's lots of nice action adventure stuff here. Um, the main group of, of um, and, and the character group, Kirk girls, his harem, um, are going back to some of their locations using the fast travel system, which is kind of underused uh, sometimes in the series, and just kind of catching up with the characters you like, and also getting to help full quest to help them out. Um, and there's lots of little nice opportunities without the travel log sections that come with the series sometimes of, of just bam, 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 action, action, action with like little breaks for character development and for community development and for just situational stuff and maybe some exploring to new locations. Um, but there's like a nice, satisfying, you know, bit of action this time around. Um, there's um, not really much of a series goal. 
uh, for the series sometimes. Um, it just, again, very slice of life. Although there are hints in this particular novel that that may change in the future and that um, new elements are going to be introduced that may prove challenging to the main character. Uh, but the big thing here is essentially, like I said in the novel description, that the developers are messing with the main character and the game and the game mechanics, uh, which he definitely rebels against in very interesting, hilariously and exploitive ways, uh, which is very entertaining for me as a gamer to read. Cause I'm like, Oh yeah, I've, I've, <laughs> I've used some of those, those tricks before to, to break a game or to break a game in beta, uh, whatever the case is. So the begin, Find entertaining stuff. It's a score of 7.8 out of 10 for me. Um, that's the Unexpected Developments Apocalypse Gates Author's Cut, book number seven, uh, with the good score of 7.8 out of 10. Had a good time. Hey, and next up is going to be Dross Brings the Bones, Adversary, volume number one in Little Bitty Series, written by Byron Blackwood. It is 320 pages, $4.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited, and here is the author's description. I'm in the game. I don't know how I got here, but I know I have a purpose. From what I understand, you're going to try to stop me. If I were you, I would do the same thing because I'm going, because I'm coming for you. I'm going to kill you. Um, that novel description, it, part of the setup of the story is that the main character um, just kind of find himself in this world. He doesn't know what's happening. He doesn't have memories of his past, um, but he has this innate desire to kill you and you is not defined um, very well at the beginning of this novel, which progressively uh, is shown why obviously, but um, I think that's part of the issue I had at the beginning of the story in that uh, like that novel description, it's not really written well. It, it doesn't give you anything to bite into, um, but mostly the, the writing style in the first chapter kind of isn't done well. Uh, and I, I don't mean to be, you know, particularly critical. It's just that that particular style, the short, choppy sections, like there's like a few um, sentences and like, you know, dot, dot, dot for the next section um, in first person present tense that seem to break the fourth wall because the main character is literally saying, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you without actually referencing who he's speaking about or his situation that he's talking about. Um, and so I feel like he's talking to you, the main character, when all that, some, some of the sections are literally just, I'm going to kill you. Um, and so it was very um, grating uh, from, from, from a reader standpoint. Um, additionally, there were other aspects of the story that just weren't um, formatted well. And again, this is like some small things that are, might not bother other people like poorly formatted game notifications, all that kind of combined in the beginning section of the story to, that made me want to put this story down. Um, but I have a, a general policy of pushing past things and finishing a story, even if I don't like to be in, because sometimes, uh, as is the case with this novel, I end up liking it because the writing improves or the story improves or the game mechanics improve or, or something happens that makes me enjoy the story more than it did when the start. So, and this is definitely one of those cases where it has a, a, a kind of a rough start uh, because of the writing style. But as the story goes on, the writing improves. Um, and, and I think... If you're one of the people who started this and you're like, oh, this is like, nope. And you couldn't get past that first like um, couple chapters. You might want to try pushing past or skipping and seeing if the story improves because it, it did for me. The story in general becomes a slice of life, almost survival story where the main character is set in this fantasy um, RPG world. And there are players that are there. Uh, and But from his perspective, he doesn't realize they're players. And so he's trying to figure out what are the rules of this world? Cause he's seen notifications and he has, um, scars on his hands and fingers, um, that show like hit points and experience points needed for the next level and stuff and, and stamina and health and stuff like that. Uh, but he doesn't know what they are necessarily cause he really is coming out, um, with the ability to function, just not any memories of where he's doing there, what his past is and what, um, that this is an MMO kind of universe. Um, and the early part of the story just kind of focuses on him trying to get the resources he needs just to live and, and fight the harsh world where nothing is given to him for free. And he's, and it's, it's, it's very, very much is a rough story. What I kind of enjoyed about the story when I actually got to the better writing um, is because it, it really does feel like, Oh, this is a low newbie character. Um, 
and the challenges presented him aren't a walk in the park. He doesn't necessarily have information as a gamer mentality necessarily, but he's he's working with what he does have, and he's making mistakes, but he's 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 he is focusing on the challenges, and it's a kind of a rush out, which makes his adventure development very you know satisfying. The story continues on past that, revealing like these big twists in the story, um, and good action scenes that keep the story interesting. And really, in general, the story on the whole felt like it was very tabletop RPG. With and you can tell that the author in, in the back of the novel, you can see that I was like, oh, I'm, I'm a I'm a very <laughs> big tabletop gamer. Like, oh yeah, they could tell in the story that that's the experience that the author's drawing from because he it's, often it's in the story felt like. Um, there was a DM throwing monsters and challenges at the main character that he was just trying to like avoid or, 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 or kind of roll with or making saving throws um, to kind of go over things or going through puzzles and quests, whatever the case is. Um, and and it, it felt very much in the line of, of slice of life kind of story where like the main character is trying to be led on this story path by a, a, an entity. Uh, and that's part of the story uh, of that occurring, but it very much felt like there was a tabletop experience um, being um, written for the for the main character. So, um, and and the main game mechanics in the story are very reflective of that uh, tabletop experience. Their mechanics are totally ripped off from, or totally um, inspired by D and D Fifth Edition, um, especially the the fighter branch of that of that of that game system, um, with modifications for. Um, HP track, like so the main character has scars on his hand instead of necessarily seeing his own H- HP and uh, stamina, mana, whatever the case is. Um, and, but he does actually look at other people and other monsters and sees that information as a notification, which was a little odd, um, but it's, it's the author's choice uh, and it does kind of differentiate it a little bit. Um, there are plenty of stats and notifications in the story, all kinds of stuff you're used to as, as a little bit of reader. Um, the, the notifications and stats are not formatted well though it's one of the things that kind of bugged me repeatedly in the story and that they're centered um and because of the way that um amazon lets you on your kindle or or, or phone device whatever it is rearrange the sizing of letters whenever you put the notifications centered um things tend to not align up very well or they get stretched out long enough before they spill over to the next line and it just looks weird and it it's always better, in my opinion, to left justify this, those stats, um, so that they're lined up and they have plenty of spacing to like stretch out. Um, that that's just a personal opinion, but it's one of the things like, oh, that was that was just visually um, bugged because it didn't line up. Um, additionally, one of the things that really bugged me was the way that the author chose to track um, XP. Um, instead of saying after a quest, oh, this is the XP for finishing the quest, like XP for a quest reward, you know, 500 points, whatever the case. Instead, the author would at the end of the quest, when he got the notification that the quest was complete, and he would say like 1800, just a, 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 a number basically. And for most of the story, I thought, oh, that's, that's the quest reward. No, nope. it ended up being, oh, that's the XP he needed to the next level, except that the author never said that. So he never said next to it, oh, XP to next level. And it was just it, it was just a number there, and so it was one of the things that bugged me until I at the end of the show when I realized oh that's what he was doing. I was like oh no that's just again poor formatting as as an experience. Instead, it would have made it much simpler if you just put next to the number XP to next level, and that would have made it much more clear as as the number updated of course. Um, but there's like little things like that. Other than that, game game, game mechanics are probably fine, entertaining, um, and familiar because they're pulls from a familiar setting. Um, overall, again, once you get past the rough start of the story, um, it's an interesting one. Um, and the end of the story has developed enough plotting by that point that you kind of want to read a book too, um, which is always a good sign. So for me, um, there are issues which I can't like ignore, obviously, but um, still get score seven point six out of ten, which is still a good positive score. Um, for Dross brings the bones, I had a good time with it eventually, um, and so it does get a good positive score. Of so again, seven point six out of ten. Okay, next up is Hung Ogre, uh, Caverns and Creature Short Story by Robert Bevan. It's about thirty pages. I think I must at the time of this recording didn't actually show the page count, um, but it's a short story. It's two ninety nine. Um, available on kindle limited you should probably only read these <laughs> when they're especially priced on sale or on kindle limited otherwise they're a little pricey for you know 30 pages for 2.99 uh here's the author's description 
Once again, our heroes awaken to find themselves drunkenly aware of the previous night's events and how they came to get into their current predicament. But no amount of diplomacy is going to save them against the appetite of the hung and hungry ogre who has captured them. Will nothing but their wits to aid them, will the CNC gang be able to escape being boiled alive? Um, and like most of the short stories from the author, these all have the same core characters from the mo- from the regular Cabin the Creature series, Critical Failure. Um, they're just all these weird adventures, and this one is no different. They're, it starts them off in the setting, and they do funny things, and they have a situation. And I always feel like the author comes up with the punny name of a series or a book, and then kind of develops the story from there. And that's the case here. There's lots of penis jokes. Um, there's probably a little more sexual description in this one than or in any of the other stories that I've read from the author. Um, but it's all very much in context of, 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 of the story. Um, there is no actual sex in the novel. I just like some, 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 some stuff, which will be entertaining to you if you've read the main series before, um, or you just like the characters. So there you go. It, it's, it's humorous. It's funny, but again, there is cursing. There's lots of, uh, moddy humor. And in this case, lots of penis jokes, because that's, that's the theme of this one with a hung over hung ogre because they're all hung over from, from being drunk so much. So a lot, so there you go. That's a uh, scores in a uh, story is entertaining for me. Get score 7.4 out of 10. Uh, that's hung ogre with the score 7.4 out of 10. And last review of the week is going to be Miriam Login. Um, it is 41 chapters as of this recording. It is free. There is no English publisher for this. And it's a webcomic. So here's the webcomic description. Large numbers of monsters come out of the gate, which is the boundary of the world. After many sacrifices, people won the fight against the monsters through their awakening. Jin, I'm going to say the same one. Jim, Jin Taeyong is alive as an F-class hunter, which is the lowest level. After Jin has a hard time, he gets an old capsule. Then he goes into the capsule that is another martial hero's world. And the game system gives him special abilities. He starts growing up to become the best martial hero. Um, and that novel description really doesn't tell you much besides the, like, the first chapter or two of this like 41 chapter story. And again, it is ongoing. Um, it's still being translated now and, and published, um, fan translated. Um, this is a good webcomic if you're in the mood for something that takes place in the martial arts path. I'm not sure what... Um, what original language this is in if it's korean or japanese i think it's i want to say korean um but don't quote me please um but it, it's set in that nation's history so you're going to see a lot of um actually i think that i've yeah i have i i have um sort of screenshotted some of the some of the context here and you can see that f- that the actual art style is very reminiscent of, of kind of martial arts movies sent in like a historical past with people in robes um martial art battles, um, sword styles, spear styles. Um, and it's, it's, it's set in that setting. So if you like that kind of setting, then you're probably going to enjoy the story in particular. Um, because most of it takes place in that, in that past where the main character is playing this, this game, um, set in this like ancient history kind of past. Um, the real world section of it, where the main character is an F class hero and the world and the modern world has like these gates. That's a very small part of it. It, it comes back in the most, most recent chapters that have been, you know, scanned and, and translated. And like, I'm saying like there are 41 chapters currently, I think the modern setting comes back in like chapter 39 or something. So for the most of the story is set in the back in that past history. And the story itself is actually pretty entertaining. If the main character goes into this game world, and he's transported into this body of this reprobate, um, reprobate noble who's a drunkard, and he spends the clan money on on hookers and stuff, and hookers and drinking, um, and he's considered a big loser in in his story world. Um, but the main character takes that character that body over. He kind of has some of the memories, but he doesn't really. So he's strutting over as a level one character, and he has to, and he's forced by the game system to improve not only the reputation of that character, but also the martial arts style. He has to relearn them all, and he gets in a bunch of like quests and situations that keep getting more complex and more like clan related, with like fighting until like there's a big war and there's lots of fighting, good action scenes, um, but it's entertaining and it's humorous and there's there's action and stuff. So if you're into something, want to 
it, it feel like something that has a good element, but also I think the biggest charge is that it is set in, in, in the house world. Um, I think this is good for you. And as I've shown with the um, screenshots for the, for, the, for the comic, the art is really nice. Good color panels, good expression to convey emotions and humor and action, good backgrounds. And because of the historical period, there's uh, an accurate architecture and clothing to match the period, which is like a nice plus. That takes some, some research, in my opinion. Uh, so it, it does feel very authentic. Um, overall, a good entertaining read. Again, if you're in, in the mood for some literary web comic with like historical settings, the game mechanics are all there, but um, and you see regular notifications, so that all exists. But um, still entertaining. Score for me is going to be seven point five out of ten. Um, Miriam Logan. This one was actually recommended by um, a friend of mine, Charles Dean. So um, I'd read part of it before. Had to give it a second chance, and I enjoyed it. So gets a score of seven point five out of ten. Okay, that is it, folks. That is the end of the podcast. Thanks for listening for watching. Remember, you can follow all, all the links for the podcast. You can find us on f- Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Patreon, and our website at littlebitpodcast.com. We have links in the show notes for everywhere to find us to get your weekly reviews for Little Bit G, or web comics, or just author of new interviews if we ever do them again. <laughs> Um, but again, I also think the show notes for other Facebook groups where Little Bridge authors and Little Bridge readers come together to chat and to talk about books that they love or to get recommendations for a particular style of Little BG. Um, and they're all fun groups. They're all very usually generally encouraging of each other and, and helpful. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast and you want to support us and keep the podcast free and ad free, remember you can find out all the ways you do so at litrpgpodcast.com slash support. Uh, but until we can hang out again, ladies and gentlemen, remember to go read some Lit RPG. And thanks again for, for hanging out with me today. Goodbye.